Hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming to my talk. Uh, my name is Seth Dimmick, and I've been working in uh, analytics for Nordstrom.com for the last two years. Um, for those of you who don't know, Nordstrom is a fashion retailer who strives to deliver the best customer experiences in our stores and online. Um, quick plug, we just opened our very first Manhattan store just a few blocks north on Broadway on 57th. So if you get a chance, go check out the Nordstrom men's store. Uh, women's store is opening next year, so if you come back to Graphic Connect in New York City next year, uh, you can visit the women's store across the street as well. Um, so at Nordstrom.com, um, we know that um, a seamless digital experience is uh, not only beneficial to the customer, but now it's expected. Um, and to do this, that requires um, uh, investment in technology. And one of those uh, key investments that Nordstrom makes is a hackathon program that we do internally. Uh, we do three hackathons a year. Um, typical format is to hack for two days, and then on the third day, you have to present a completed project to a panel of senior leadership uh, for judging. So for our last summer hackathon, I decided to take on uh, with a team uh, graph recommendations. So uh, just as a disclaimer, recommendations is not my domain of expertise, and neither is graph. I just wanted to try it out. So I hope that uh, me walking you through this process of what we did uh, will help you generate your own graph ideas. So why recommendations? Um, if you're coming from an industry other than retail, um, maybe some of you are in retail and that's why you're here at this talk, but um, if you're coming from an industry other than retail, uh, you may not know their importance. Uh, now, recommendations on a website uh, have become a essential navigation and discoverability tool uh, for shoppers online. Imagine you get to a product page on a website um, and your only options are to add that item to your bag or hit the back button. Uh, in this experience, you've essentially reached a dead end uh, which is not a good shopping experience at all. Um, so what we need to do is provide a path forward for the shopper, and that path forward uh, needs to be the right path for that shopper, and it needs to be in the right place. And through uh, numerous A-B tests on, on our website, we know that uh, tweaks and recommendation placement and strategy have a huge impact to the customer experience um, and to shopper outcomes as well. So. That's um, why recommendations in general. Now, specifically for Nordstrom, I know there's a personalization opportunity for our uh, recommendations in real time. Um, I recently worked on a project uh, before doing this hackathon where I helped personalize uh, the order of content on our mobile homepage. Now, on our mobile homepage, um, we have this series of content tiles. Um, some of them are fixed marketing um, initiatives, but others are more product-based and we have the freedom to, to rearrange those based on, on shoppers and their preferences. So what we did uh, before, before using Graph um, is we used a Markov chain model approach, which uh, a very simple Markov chain you see in the middle there, that's naturally a graph in your mind. But to do that without Graph, uh, you use a transition matrix where you just store uh, the probabilities of moving from one state to another state. So for a very simple Markov chain like the one in the middle of the screen there, you would have those four scores to store in your transition matrix. Uh, the probability of uh, going from A and staying on A, the probability of going A to B, B to A, and B to B. Now, to do this for content on our page, what we did is uh, we, we developed scores for the possibility of transitioning between uh, brands, uh, genders, age groups of our, our products. Um, and then tied those from products uh, customers associated with to the, those same attributes of content on the page. And we found uh, positive uh, shopper outcomes by personalizing the order of this content and surfacing that relevant content sooner to the shopper. So uh, another reason uh, for uh, tackling this with recommendations is I already know that there's data available on our site uh, to do this uh, in real time for shoppers as they're exploring our product pages. So we already have a live event stream on our website uh, that populates our recently viewed uh, tray of items. So we already know exactly what the shopper's journey looks like as they go uh, through our website. So why graph? Um, I was introduced to Neo4j at a conference in Seattle in 2017 after doing a transition matrix approach. And I was like, hey, this sounds like it might be uh, a good idea to try out. Um, 
And uh, particularly, I thought it would solve a problem of scaling that I was facing. Um, for the home page, we were just uh, documenting transitions between generic attributes of products, not exact products, or as we call them at Nordstrom, styles. Um, so imagine you have a catalog of, say, 200,000 possible styles. If you wanted to document uh, transitions between just those styles, um, you would square 200,000, and you would immediately have 40 billion possible transitions to score and store uh, relationally. Now, I had the, the idea, well, what if we want to take more of the shopper context into consideration? Uh, so say you wanted to take not only consideration one thing, but the thing they did before that as well. Um, so if you want to do two steps, you need to cube 200,000, and now you're looking at eight quadrillion uh, possibilities and some colossal joins that are going to make your database administrators uh, very irritated with you when you're trying to explore this data. Now, Graph, on the other hand, is perfectly suited for mapping a customer journey like this. Um, instead, you just need one node for each of your styles, and then you just record relationships between them as they occur. So a uh, quick note on the scope of this hackathon project that we did. I think it is best practice with any new data adventure to uh, pick a smaller sample than all the possible data that exists. Um, so our team, we just tackled uh, a sample from 30 days of traffic from our men's shoes category on the site, uh, which looked at about 20,000 unique styles and 2 million transitions between those styles. So let's get into the graph. So we had a very a simple initial concept for our graph um, that would take into consideration uh, just uh, two steps of the customer journey. So uh, we wanted to take into consideration the current style being viewed, and then the most recent style viewed before that that we could get from our live event stream, and then find all the paths of shoppers who have done that before and moved on to another item and then suggest the top item based on the number of paths we observe. So that we can do with a very simple schema and graph. We just have one type of node uh, representing our products uh, with their specific styles. And then we have these next view relationships uh, between them, which document a sequential move from one product to another done by a shopper. Now, to, in order to do this correctly, we would need to make sure that these two next view relationships in this scenario are done by the same shopper. So we'd have to make sure that that shopper identifier is equated. Um, now, luckily, we had one engineer on our team who had used graph before, um, and he knew that uh, it's actually much more performance to query on an index attribute, which you can do on a node. So we changed up our, our schema just a little bit, adding a, a tiny bit more complexity, just changing those next view relationships to nodes, uh, so then on those next few nodes in the middle is where we actually put our shopper identifiers um, and then added very simple uh, just next relationships uh, connecting the chain. So each next view node has exactly two relationships to it. And that allows us to perform the queries much quicker and also aggregate quicker on the nodes instead of the relationships. Now we had a little extra time, believe it or not, in two days while we were building out this system. So we said, you know, let's really wow the judges and show how flexible this can be and add in a traditional uh, property graph model as well. So we went ahead and added on from that same sample um, shopper nodes um, in that time period with viewed and purchase relationships to our products, which I'll demonstrate how it uh, gives us the ability to emulate a uh, strategy we already have available on the in already have available on the website, like people also bought and people also viewed. So I'll give you a quick uh, demo I have here of what this actually looks like then in the Neo4j browser. Here is our uh, schema with the, our green nodes being our, our styles. We have our next view relationship between this. So this is one shopper uh, moving who did a sequential view from this style to this style. And also for each of our styles, we have our viewed and purchased relationships with different shoppers. So let's get into uh, the strategies then. So first I'll cover uh, just emulating a, a very simple people also bot strategy. So we have some cipher here on the screen. Uh, if, you, if you're a little rusty on your cipher or haven't done it before, we're getting you prepped for your workshops tomorrow. 
Um, and this, I'm not claiming to be the, the most simple or pure way to write this query, but it is very easy to understand, which is the great thing about Cypher. So you can follow along line by line here. What we're doing with this uh, Cypher query, we simply find all the shoppers who view uh, who viewed the currently, who bought the currently viewed style. Um, then we're going to take those same shoppers that we've saved as S on the left hand side of that second line, um, and we're going to find all the products that those shoppers purchased, um, and that where those products are not the one we're looking at right now. What we can then do is just count up the number of, of people who have bought each one of those unique styles um, and return the top ones. So that's what people also bought. And then the one we actually wanted to, to execute on for this hackathon was taking into consideration more context. Uh, so this is written out to, to read very simply. What we're looking for is um, with our parameterized style one on the top line, we're looking for the style you viewed previously, um, so the one most recent in our event stream, and then the style that you're viewing right now. And then we're going to look for all the paths where anyone viewed those two items sequentially and went on to view a third product after that, um, where those are the same shoppers doing those two transitions. And then once we have all those paths um, found, we can simply count up which styles on the end have the most paths going toward them and return uh, the top ones. So we can do a quick demo to help you kind of visualize what this actually looks like. Uh, for our simple people also bought strategy, you can get a visual of this. So what the people also bought actually uh, looks like is here in the center you have the, the product node for the style that's currently being viewed. And then we have found all the shoppers who have purchased this style before. And then out on the perimeter you have all the other styles in our sample uh, that were also bought by those shoppers. So for example, this product out here, we see uh, one shopper has, in our sample has bought both of those products. And then what we're looking for for our recommendations are actually these clusters of shoppers who, these are the products where we see uh, the most connection of people uh, buying both of those things and would be good products to recommend. So for our uh, production system, then it's very easy. Um, we're obviously not going to return a visual graph uh, to, our, to our recommendations platform, but instead you do something like this. It would just return in tabular form uh, with our styles ranked by the number of uh, people who have bought both of those styles. Now the one that's more uh, personalized to the shopper's context uh, I think looks pretty cool. So once I drag this out here, you'll really be able to see it. So based on that query, that second query we went over, what you're seeing here is in the middle, you've got the currently viewed uh, products. And over on the right-hand side, uh, this is the, the product that they viewed most recently beforehand. And you see all those transitions um, that we found where shoppers did that exact same sequence. And then we've also found the next transitions that those shoppers did. Um, and what we can do is look for the ones that have a uh, higher concentration of shoppers going to. And we know that people who did this one hop then went on to do this other hop most often. And we're trying to ease the navigation for the customer. Uh, you probably, hey, we know people who view this and view this go on to view this and just surface that to the top for our shoppers. And then if you run that, exact uh, piece of cipher that we went over on the page. Um, it's going to just return those styles just in a sequential order, and we can get those top items to the top of our shopper's uh, navigation pane there. So what's next with this? Um, now, as I said, recommendations is not my, my do domain expertise, but um, one of the team members on this hackathon does work on that recommendations platform, and they continue to investigate uh, how to get uh, graph-based strategies um, on par with our current system and what it, what it will take to get this into production. Um, but what's next for me is I'm hoping to leverage this uh, experience to apply to a different domain area that I do work on, and that is the looks 
aspect of the Nordstrom website, which is a relatively new experience. Um, right now, you'll see it across a lot of different product pages down on the bottom of our page. And these are actually hand curated um, stylings of our products um, put together by merchants and stylists to help our customers visualize how to wear these products and also serve as an additional recommendation for, uh, to, to cross-sell our items just like a salesperson does for you in the store. Um, so I hope to use Graph to model these hand-curated uh, outfits and uh, find the associations between products and their attributes um, to then build out a suite of tools to help our stylists and merchants um, create these looks more efficiently. So thank you so much for uh, listening to my talk on our hackathon project. And if you want to uh, connect or ask any questions, I'm going to pack up and I'll be available uh, right out in the hall. And I'll, I'll make room. Yeah, so these are, these are, hands, these are hand curated looks by our, uh, by our stylist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she would pick out. She said, "Yeah, that those khaki pants that goes with the pink shirt. That looks good. But You're good to go." <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Cool. Thank you, guys.